So you got to submit first to your vision. And I want to think, I want you to think about it like this. It's not submitting, it's enrolling. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot, I'm curious about how to handle my woman. She's 25 years old, graduated from college with a degree in dance, and we run into a lot of issues with her submitting to me. She's very independent and told me directly that she has trouble with her independence, shying away from her when she's with me. About three weeks ago, we found out she's pregnant. And with her pregnant hormones in the picture, I struggled to know how to handle certain situations when it comes to me putting my foot down. A lot of what she says contradicts itself based on her actions. And as her boyfriend uh, of the future and husband of the, you know, uh, baby, baby, baby daddy, right? I don't know when is en enough is enough. He says, I'm strugg I struggle with knowing if I should keep putting up with her constant reminders of me being wrong all the time. She claims she knows that I'm the uh, that I'm the best that's happened to her and yet treats me as if I'm someone she doesn't care about. I love her. I know she has red flags before dating her. I understand that change has to come from within, just that it feels as if she's testing me the whole time. The reason I stay is because of my commitment towards her, uh, which was made before we found out about the baby. She constantly talks about co-parenting when we have issues and soon after talks about how she can't imagine life without me. Knowing all the red flags, I stay with her and move forward, thinking that if I lead the way for her that she would change on her own. I know I was not going to be able to change her directly, but I wanted to do so by leading the way. I made sacrifices so that she can see that if I can do it, she can do it. My theory is that she's pushing to see if I walk away like her father did. Uh, question is, how should I handle this being that she's the mother of my child and my desire is for her to still be there? Let me know what you think. Uh, great question. And the first thing I want to say, man, is I want it to work for you. I really want it to work for you. It's a it's a nice thing that you're with this girl and that you're making babies. Uh, it's going to be a... It's going to be a workout routine for you. Let me put it this way. And this is this is for everybody in relationships. And it's particularly talking to you guys because I know you're not the only one David is dealing with women of this day. I don't know how I would do it. I don't know. I, like I say, I, by the grace of God, I have the type of woman I have. And I'm a little bit older than you guys. But I understand these women, they are really arrogant and really conceited. And they think they're right. And they can have whatever they want because they don't need men. The government will take care of them. They can do whatever they want. They can do whatever they want. They're power. They're, they got power by the horns. But yet they cry victim. It's the weirdest thing. It's a strange thing where you guys are dealing with these type of women. Uh, but it's the culture. It's where you're at. And so when I said this is going to be a workout for you, let me put it this way. This, whatever unfolds in your life, whatever happens in your life, wherever you find yourself, whatever generation you land on this planet and all the circumstances around it are is the soil for your soul's growth. You drop that soul seed in the soil of what your life looks like in every moment, and that was prepared for you. And so I say that to you, but I say that to all, all of y'all, that these particular challenges of this day, of this degenerate age, are the very challenges that you, your individual soul needs to confront for its progression and you got to do it with a partner now <laughs> right as tough as life is today right and it's crazy because it's a different kind of tough and it shows to prove what kind of growth we're expected to have it's not a physical tough it's not a physical toughness like you know the great depression or like the 1920s or the late 19th century you know uh, what late 18th century 18th to 19th, 19th century. Anyway, long time ago, right? It's not tough like that. It's not physically tough like that. We have so much pleasure, and it's a part of the pleasure and, and, and a part of the uh, comfort and, and convenience is a part of the problem why we're suffering. We're suffering so much because we're not made for this. But it's a soul struggle. It's a soul toughness. It's beating up on your mind and in your heart. That's your soul, your thoughts and your feelings, Right? It's a, it's a tough struggle. And so for young men dealing with women in this way, you gotta, and so we had a conversation earlier about virtue. 
we got to start if we're gonna if we're gonna navigate this for our own soul's growth, right? Your situation, your young man, your, and this girl is even a little bit older, and you're 23 and she's 25. Ha! That's why she thinks she's older. That's why she, just to back up for a moment, it's part of the reason why she thinks she could tell you what to do. It's it's tough dealing with an older woman. You tough dealing with women, I understand because they're big egos right now. The way just just the generation. I'm not talking all women. I'm talking about particularly of your generation. Um, but then when she's a little bit older than you, you know, she's older, she's making her own money, all these various things that, that, that make, give a woman a sense of false empowerment. It's not real empowerment. It's the trappings of empowerment that comes with no responsibility because true empowerment is to the degree of the responsibility. And these women have no responsibility. They have no responsibility. They don't need to have any responsibility, right? Because big daddy government is their sugar daddy, right? They can do whatever they want, right? Um... But anyway, this is, she is, uh, you ever see a rock tumbler? You know what a rock tumbler is? You put rocks inside it and you, and you turn it like this and the rocks beat up against each other, but then they come out shiny. She's your rock. You guys are two rocks in a rock tumbling. You're going to, you're going to, you're going to shine each other up. You're going to, right? Right? This kind of beating, but I like that kind of beating. You already did that. This kind of beating, Right? You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna bump up against each other, but if you both have the same sense of a vision for your life, because this is so important. Because if you don't, if you can't get on the same page, you're gonna be beating each other up, but you, in the rock tumbler, but you're not gonna come out shiny. The only way that you guys are gonna come out shiny, and now she's your partner, regardless, not you got a baby with this lady. This is it. This is it. You tied to her forever. Ever, 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 ever. She, you tied to her, right? Because now you got a baby with her. The right thing to do would be to marry her, but this is not a conversation about marriage. I'm not going to force that on you. But it's my opinion that you're making a family and you do the right thing when you make a family. You make it official. It's an official family, not a fake family. We got all these fake families running around today. A real family has a mommy and a daddy, a husband and a wife. But you do what you want in that regard. It'd be better if you did it, but... Then again, these women are crazy. So <laughs> I feel for you. It's a, it's a rock and hard place for you, for you guys. So here, let's start talking about how we're going to make this work, right? So when a woman, I, my wife changed. Not that she needed to change like I was, I was wanting her to change, but I noticed the change in her when she started having children. And a woman, a woman is... A totally different person when they become a mother the whole perspective on life changes and it could be that this is an opportunity for things to change for the better depending on how you deal with her like a true leader you have to have the vision you got to be the visionary for this family and you got to come and you have to enroll her in this vision it's already a family she already don't respect you. You already got a baby coming. But you have an opportunity with this, uh, you know, pattern interrupt, this change of, change of pace right now with the baby coming, to step into the driver's seat, get into the driver's seat, and start thinking what a woman, woman respects a man that thinks about the future. Because a woman's, women are more uh, safety and security minded than men especially when they have a baby. So they want to make sure that shit is, that things are going to be all right and we're going to have a nice life. I want to have a nice life for my baby, right? I was talking about nesting the other day, right? So you're already linked up with her. You're doing this together. Somebody has to become the visionary. The visionary, the visionary, when you think about a business, the CEO, the COO, the managers, the people that are doing things and getting things done oftentimes with the biggest mouth aren't always, and in, and in the greatest cases, they're not the visionary. The visionary is the entrepreneur. The visionary is at the top. He's at the top of the mountain. But then he has other people that help mold that vision into reality. Right? A lot of people, when I say that, you, you know, they think that I'm saying something negative that women have no value. Right. When I talk about the order of the home when like, you know, for the man to be the visionary and things of this nature, it's not that 
It's that we have particular values that are unique to our sex. I don't even like that word gender. They just made that one up. That's a new word. We didn't say gender when I was a kid. He said sex. It's a sex. It's a man or a woman, right? Uh, and so we have, to, we have to honor that in ourselves. We've got to honor that in one another. And you've got to honor in yourself that you now have bought a company. Let me put it that way as another way to look at it, right? The family is, they would say, Catholics say the family is a mini church. But if you look at the way the church is set up, it's set up like a hierarchy. It's set up like an organization. Better way for the secular world is to say a family is like a mini corporation. It's a mini corporation. And you already have one. You already have a, you have a mini corporation. You're in business. And you got to step to the top of that mountain for this newly formed business that maybe was an accident, right? Your accidental business that you now have. But you got to take, you got to take responsibility for it. So you got to step to the top of that mountain. You got to start carving a vision first for yourself while integrating. When I say first for yourself, meaning in your mind first, don't go to try to convince her of a vision that you haven't seen yet fully, that you're not clear about yet. But it's not just for you. It's a vision for you integrating your new your new family, your new corporation. What do you want? What do you want for this family? Where's this family going? What values do you hold, hold high that you want to express through this family? A family is a very creative experience. It's the most creative experience, right? Think about artists, right? They get to carve people out of stone. You get to make a real person, a real live person. And you get to create a real live kingdom, meaning a family and the business around the family and the vision for the family and the execution through your wife for a family. You see what I'm saying? It's a highly creative act. It's the most creative act. And it's, it's a kind of art that is lacking sorely in this day. The art of homemaking, family rearing. You could become a great artist with this family. You know, I was listening to uh, Alan Watts. Sometimes he talks about like uh, he talks about ancient art, ancient Egypt, uh, uh, ancient Asian art. And he was talking about a, a period of art where they would um, in in Japan. It was like the Zen period. They would find like the most screwed up looking thing, or they would create like. There's one guy. He would just put paint in his hair, and he would flop his hair like this on the, uh, on the canvas just to make something look terrible. Or they would literally, they would try to find like a broken, like a really screwed up looking uh, object, like, you know, a tree trunk or just like something that's ugly. And the, the, the art of the time, the popular art of the time was taking things that were weird and screwed up and then making it delightful. Like they, you know, maybe that painted with like it's just his hair splattered on there. Maybe like he shows how like flowers are growing up out of the cracks, and it like you know it looks almost like you know flowers coming up out of the ground because he got all these streaks on it, and then he turns it into something beautiful. But they would always start with something ugly, and then they would turn it into something beautiful. I'm not saying your situation is ugly; it's not beautiful, but it's not ugly. But you can beautify the crap out of it by creating a great family. I know your wife is, she's not down yet. She, I, know, I get what you're saying, right? I'm giving you all this high hope, but then you hear it like, my wife won't even submit to me. She got to submit first to your vision. And I, wanna th I want you to think about it like this. It's not submitting, it's enrolling. You got to enroll her in this vision. A submissive wife is, is a wife that, my wife a lot of times doesn't agree with what I want to do or, what, I, or what, I, you know, what I'm saying or whatever, right? And she's not forced to agree. But when a decision has to be made, the buck stops here, right? I'm the responsible party and I'm the authority. And that's just normal and natural. That's just the way it is in nature. That's the natural law between men and women because men are stronger. And, and it, that's a multifaceted thing when I say stronger, but it just, it rests on that. There's a responsibility associated with being stronger because we could, 
we can really women can do whatever they want because government <laughs> right big daddy government men can really do whatever they want because natural law that's neither here nor there but anyway the type of submission I'm, 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 you're looking for is really enrollment. It's really enrollment. First, you've got to submit to your vision. You got to submit to your vision for your family. What are you doing here, right? And you got to put that family. You got to put that family very high on your list, right? Otherwise, you're going to end up creating more screwed up kids. It's going to have more screwed up families. It's going to have just the spiral downward of our entire society. Get clear about this vision. Feel this vision for your life, right? And that's a whole nother conversation about how to get clear on that vision. A whole nother, a whole nother issue, but for the sake of time, I throw, put it out there like this. Work on receiving clarity about your vision in life and why you have this family and what you're doing with this family and what the next 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years might look like. You're not going to get it exact. You're not going to get it right. You're not going to know everything, but you're going to get a sense for the direction that you're going in, the movement. You got a sense where we're going to move based on what is the right thing to do for my family. Once you become enrolled, at least in a direction, not a clear vision, but a direction, where are we going? Are we rising up or are we going down? We're living sideways. What are we doing? Right? What kind of life? What kind of life are we creating? Then you get to enroll her. You get to spell it out for her. And if she's if she has a heart, which I imagine she does, because you love this woman. She, she, she there's something in her that's tender that keeps you stuck to her. If you can use that vision to soften her heart up a little bit by letting her know that this is what I want to do for you. This is what I want to do for you. I know you're a little bit older than me. You got, you got to, you have to have that conversation. I'm sure you have. I know you had a little bit, you're a little bit older than me. I know that for the past few years, you've been the leader, right? I know that, but you say the way you need to say, it. I know that we don't see eye to eye on things a lot of time and we come to, frustration and argument but this is what I want for you and our baby and this is what I want for our family and this is what I can see for the future I want to have grandkids right healthy happy strong useful children and grandchildren right I want to make that contribution to the world I want to treat this family like a piece of art and you're my centerpiece my wife is my centerpiece my wife, the wife, my wife is my center. I wouldn't have a family if I didn't have my wife. So if I'm setting the frame, she's the centerpiece. What woman will argue with that? Right? Making you the centerpiece. We got we to gotta work together. And if there's any arguments about what I'm saying right now, which I know there will be, I understand. But go back to the original part of this question and my or original uh conversation I started to have regarding this question which was you're gonna get beat up it's just it that's what you're here for I think you can make it work if you navigate appropriately being aggressive when you need to or being tender when you need to being present in the moment for that being able to sense the shifts in energy in her because it's going to change she's got a baby now But the whole respect dynamic will, will unfold appropriately when you take responsibility for the vision for your family and your life. That's the most important thing. I hope that helps, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from the coaching sessions that I have every week with my King Transformation students where among other things, we get together for about four or five hours a week. We talk all things related to becoming kings in our lives, in fitness, business, and with women. If that sounds like you, and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G. Me and my team will get back to the details and see if you qualify to join us. Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.